Hello, I'm Hal. Welcome back to, welcome back to Kathy Meadows. Uh, I want to take a video today to show you my chicken coops. Uh, some of the things I've done with them that were successful and some of the things that I would do different if I was doing it all over again. Maybe we can learn some things together and I can uh, save you the trouble from making the same mistakes I've made. Uh, anyway, please like and subscribe if you... Uh, if you enjoy what you're seeing, hope we can all learn something together. And uh, like I said, hopefully I can keep you guys from making some of the mistakes I've made. Hey, so this is the first chicken coop I made. Um, I uh, made all of my chicken coops or uh, all the things that I've made. I've made from scrap material that I had. And that's, uh, that's worked out pretty well for me. Um, just walking you around the outside to show you what the outside is. Those are um, antique wheels off a, off a hay wagon or some sort of wheelbarrow that my uh, grandfather had that uh, they were still laying around the house um, long, long after he died. He was a farmer in Tunica, Mississippi. And uh, well, I got a hold of them and uh, figured they would make good wheels on the chicken coop. The idea initially was that I could grab it by the handles in the front, move it around where I needed to move it to. And uh, and I can, that's worked out fairly well. Here's my ramp, just a couple old two by sixes that I had laying around. Um, you can see right here, drilled a hole in this cross member. That's for me to put this chicken coop. I can attach it to my lawnmower and I can pull it around with my lawnmower like a trailer. Initially, Initially, I had the wheels on the back. You can see where they had been attached there. That made the front very heavy. Um, I was still able to move it, but uh, it was much more of a challenge. Eventually, that wore out and I had to move the wheels, so I moved them further forward so I could change the center of gravity and make it easier to lift on the front and move. And uh, that ended up covering up one of my my access doors here um so that's that's a problem a little bit because i can't get into the side right there but it's okay on the back here i've got some ventilation some of this uh half inch wire uh mesh i've just got a nut i had a wing nut here to secure it closed and um well i lost it i dropped it in the grass and couldn't find it um I probably should reinforce this door. If a raccoon really wanted to, it could break in. Um, it would be easy enough to do just a two by four around the corner, around the top, just a frame, just a frame around that door would make that door solid enough to keep a raccoon out of it. I have seen where raccoons have busted into chicken coops. Um, I've had a, ra a problem with a raccoon getting into my chicken coop. But that was my mistake because I accidentally left the door open. I was uh, new to keeping chickens and it was not a habit yet to close the chickens up every night. And uh, left the door open and uh, lost a bunch of chickens to some raccoons. One of the mistakes that I've made that I would have done differently is you see my nesting boxes here that I've made on the outside. Well, I got these latches. To hold it down i got one on both sides so hopefully if a raccoon can get into one he won't get into the other these nesting boxes because of the height of the coop are about five feet off the ground which works fine for me if i'm coming over here looking in here for eggs got eggs that trash can lid's another story i'll explain that in a minute the problem with the nesting boxes being that high off the ground Except my wife can't see in to get the eggs because she's only five, a little over five feet tall. So that, that has not worked out too well. You'll see what I've got here is some just cut out wood uh, braces that I put on there. What I do, I have this piece of plywood with a, a brace on it. That drops down. That secures there closes the door pull it out open the door put the braces in put it in up there holds the door open 
the floor of my chicken coop is this welded wire. The thought process was that the chicken poop would fall through and I would it would stay cleaner without the stink and without the poop. Um, I was wrong. That didn't work the way I hoped it would work. Um, so now every, uh, I don't know, every couple months I come in here and I'll just take this out. Clean it out. Throw the chicken dust, chicken crap on the ground. Put it in the, the compost, make it into fertilizer. Uh, do whatever. It, it does come out relatively easy off of that wire, but it did not do what I was hoping to and just fall through and stay clean. Um, one of the other mistakes that I've made on this chicken coop that I would do differently in the future is I did not initially, if you look in the nesting boxes, have a board here to secure. So when I had a hen sit on eggs and hatch, the chicks, the new chicks, went over the edge landed on the wire and new chicks cannot keep their body temperature up they re rely on their mom to keep them warm and those chicks that fell down um well they died and uh i lost some chicks so i added that bar there to to uh keep them in for a couple of days until they're able to get up and down out of the nesting boxes adequately i've got a pallet piece of a pallet there on the inside to help the chickens get up to the roosting bar. Um, I've since learned that a two by four makes a better roosting bar than a two by two does. If you look here at this bar, this was a, a two by three that I made these handles with. Uh, the, the surface here it's only an inch and a half wide, so the chicken's feet hang over the edge. When it's winter time, the toes that hang over the edge are susceptible to frostbite. So if you take a two by three or a two by four and lay it wide, wide ways down, the chicken's feet sit on there better. Their feathers, no, cupcake, leave them alone. Cupcake, cupcake. No. Cupcake is the reason that we have this fence. Those babies got out of the fence and Cupcake wants to get them, obviously. Cupcake, no. no. Leave it. Cupcake is a young Great Pyrenees that does pretty well with our livestock, but is too tempted by chickens. Cupcake, leave it, no. She can't be trusted. Um, right now, she's out off, off of her lead, off of her dangle stick, out with the livestock here on the other side of the fence because I'm out here watching her. Um, keep her from hurting any of our animals. When I go back inside, Cupcake's going to go back on the other side of that electric fence where she can't get to the chickens, can't get to the animals unsupervised. So anyway... Back to what I was saying, when you have a flatter surface, a two by three or two by four, the chicken's toes can go under their feathers when it's cold outside and keep them from getting frostbite on their toes. Another issue that I've had with this welded wire is that the chickens can get their toes caught in the wire and, uh, and break their toes, amputate their toes, cause them some toe pain. That's a... Uh, it's not, not often, but it has happened. So if I had to do it over again, I would put a solid surface down there with uh, maybe some rolled linoleum that was easy to clean off so that, um, so that I could avoid all those problems. What the welded wire does do, though, is help with ventilation. Even though it's mostly covered up on poo with poo, there's enough open holes that the ventilation is good. Um, I haven't had any problems with this coop other than uh, the dead chicken uh, chicks that fell out of the nesting box and the uh, 
and the hurt toes every now and then. Once the chickens are grown, that's much less of a problem. But uh, like I said, if I had to do it over again, I'd put a solid surface down there. Um, I may have told you I'd explain to you about this trash can lid. A trash can lid is covering right now a chicken who is sitting on eggs. The reason that I have her covered up is because although there's four nesting boxes in here, pardon that they're dirty, I fill them up with hay and the chickens scratch the hay out daily. All of the chickens will lay in the same nesting box. I've got about 15 to 20 chickens out here between these two coops and they all try to lay in one nesting box. Um, that chicken will get sat on by another chicken and they'll lay an egg on top of her. What that ends up doing is making it very hard to tell which eggs are fresh and which eggs are old, um, which eggs are developing and which eggs are not. So I've got her covered up. I did that just this morning because she's only been broody for about a day. I'm going to take her out and put her in a maternity coop later this evening um, to... Uh, that way I can make sure I always have fresh eggs and I don't have to worry about which ones she's sitting on or the right eggs that she's developing and our new eggs. I could potentially mark the eggs, but I haven't done that. Here's my other coop that I have that I built. It's another DIY coop. This is all pallet boards. Um, there was a company here in town that sold deconstructed pallets uh, for a very fair price. Um, it was at the time, I think $20 for a pallet of pallet boards that was roughly uh, three foot by three foot by three foot, um, give or take. So I'm just walking you around it. I, I made it all with uh, recycled, well, recycled pallets um, and a couple of spare framing, you know, two by fours, two by twos that I had um, at the house. We have this one on skids. The skids are just four by fours that I cut an angle on the end. This way I can drag it with the tractor. I can drag it with my pickup truck. Um, initially, I had it on, on legs. I had legs under it that I had the skids on. But uh, when I was dragging it up onto a trailer when we were moving from our old house to this house, uh, I broke the legs off. So now I put the skids directly under it and it works just as well. From time to time, I'll take my farm jack and I'll jack it up and I'll put it on center block so it's got some height. On the inside, same mistake. Or, well, it's not a mistake. Same issue. I used welded wire. This wire is a little cleaner, but where they roost, there's such a collection of chicken poo that uh, that we end up with the same problem that uh, that it doesn't fall through. My nesting boxes are a little bit lower, um, easy for my wife to get in. I made these open out. I have the same little eye hooks here, and then they open out. I've got some eggs in there. Same issue with this one. I'll put hay and straw in there for them to nest on, and then they just kick it out and eat it. So, uh, so I just uh, let them. Um, this, this coop, I got a door on the front also have a door on the back um, use some recycle hinges and some gate hardware that that I had in the past this uh, a little more complicated than a, a raccoon's been able to figure out let me get in here get this this is my makeshift nesting box for the ones that were trying to be broody it, it's just a cat litter tub so that's that chicken coop i uh i'm much more satisfied with this chicken coop than i am my first chicken coop as far as ease of use getting the eggs um the chickens staying safe when they have baby chicks um i've got two roosting bars in there it holds uh at the max i've held i've had about 30 or 40 chickens in there easy now, I free range. All my chickens free range um, during the day. If I did not free range, I would need a chicken run that uh, I think they recommend 10 square feet.
per each chicken in the chicken run. And uh, it's two or three square feet per chicken in the chicken coop. That would be if they were going to be in there locked up all the time. Mine are not. They're just, they go up at night, they roost, and then they come back out during the day in free range. It works for me. Um, like I said, the net is for cupcake and other predators. Um, you see her over there looking at something, probably one of the sheep. She does good, like I said, with the livestock, but she doesn't do good with the chickens. Um, so that being said, that's, that's where I'm at now. Um, things I would do different were, were mentioned. Things I like about my chicken coops is that, that they are several years old now. They're still together. They still work and I'm successfully raising chickens and eggs in them. Um, if you have any questions at all, if I didn't, if I didn't answer any of your questions, uh, feel free to, to leave me a comment. I'll try to answer whatever questions you've got. And otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video and you have some ideas for, for your chicken coop and some ideas of things that you might uh, want to avoid that maybe I did that could work better for you if you didn't do. So thank you guys. Um, hope you enjoy the video. All right, let's go. You're brave. Do it. I'm filming.